The alcohol below can exist as two enantiomers or optical isomers, a pair of optical isomers. Right. Now, here, look at this molecule here. There's a carbon atom here, which is connected to a CH3 group on the left. If we look at it as a two-dimensional projection of a three-dimensional molecule, there's a hydrogen atom on the top there. There's an OH group down the bottom and a CH2, CH3 on the right. Okay. So this carbon atom that I'm pointing to has got four different substitute or groups attached to it. Now, I'm sure you would have played with molecular models in school involving this type of situation. If you take such a molecule where you have a carbon atom connected to four different groups and you assemble that molecule and then you assemble its mirror reflection, right? No amount of turning around the bonds can make those two structures to be superimposable. The thing with the optical isomers are these, if, uh, is this, a structure and its mirror reflection are non-superimposable. So when does that happen? When you have a carbon atom that is connected to four different groups. So as you can see, that's the case here. Okay, it says draw three-dimensional structures for the two enantiomers. Now, let's go to the next page side where I've actually drawn this to help us along. Now, this is meant to show the three-dimensional, the true three-dimensional nature of the situation. There's the carbon atom and it's connected to the four different groups that come off it. One is a hydrogen atom, the other one is the C2H5 and then you have the CH3 and the OH. Now, when this type of drawing, this stereochemical structure like this, is meant to depict a three-dimensional situation on two-dimensional paper. A solid line represents a bond coming out of the plane of the page. A dotted line is meant to represent a bond going back in behind the plane of the page. These single-line bonds are, of course, bonds in the plane of the page. So you have a carbon atom with the H atom going upwards in the plane of the page, a C2H5 or ethyl group also in the plane of the page, and you have a metal group sticking out of the paper and a hydroxy group going backwards in behind the paper. Right. Now think you have a mirror here between the two. Think of that as a mirror. And we draw its mirror reflection. The carbon atom at the center the H up the top there. Now remember this C2H5 which was nearest to the mirror? That will be mirror reflected <coughs> C2H5 this way here. And then our OH that was at the back will be still there as a OH behind the page and our CH3 which was sticking out of the page will still be sticking out of the page. Okay, now as I said pair of optical enantiomers are non-superimposable. So if you take this here and you try to superimpose them, if you have this CH bond, CH bond, if you turn this around to bring the C2H5 to this side, to the right hand side, so let's turn this around that single bond, around the CH bond, we are going to rotate the rest of the molecule around that CH bond, what happens? When the C2H5 group comes to the right hand side, you can see that the OH group, which was behind to begin with, when you rotate it by 180 degrees, is going to be sticking out of the page. And the CH3 is going to be behind the page. So you can see they are non-superimposable. Okay, nobody's asked uh, any question about that, so I take it that that's all understood. When answering these things, I won't just answer the question, but I take it as an opportunity to go over the material around that so it consolidates your understanding, all, and it might also remind you of something else that you are not 100% certain about and would like to therefore ask a question and get clarified. Does it matter which of the atoms you say is coming out of the page or into the page? No. When you're drawing this, I could have, for instance, 
had to begin with the C2H5 up there in the air, the hydrogen over here, and then OH and CH3, let's say, in these same positions. The important thing is this, that whichever way you configured it to begin with, when answering this question, you must get the mirror reflection of what you have drawn there. As long as you have done that, it didn't matter whether you drew this with the H on the top or, uh, and the C2H5 here or the other way around, right? But then make sure this one is also drawn that way. So think of a mirror being there and then the C2H5 will come here, H up there, the CH3 sticking out of the page, the OH behind the page. Okay, Kiara, did that clarify that completely for you? One way that I would draw this very simply, if I were drawing this structure, right, just forget that structure that's drawn there, I could also keep the H and the C2H5 exactly where they are and swap the positions of the OH and the CH3. I could have the OH sticking out of the page and the CH3 behind the page as the mirror reflection then that would mean a mirror reflection that is a mirror that is parallel to the paper, the plane of the paper, right? And then the CH3 that was initially sticking out will be the one that's furthest behind the mirror and the OH which was sticking behind the paper would be the one that's closest to the mirror and that will be the one that's sticking out. So whichever structure you draw as that configuration, make sure you draw the mirror reflection of that which you began with. Okay, that's the only requirement. Okay, good. Uh, it says then at the end, link the structure of enantiomers to physical to a physical property that can be used to distinguish them from non-optically active molecules. Okay, link the structure of enantiomers. Now, the reason I want to go through these sorts of things is something to do with examination technique. I have seen that in many, many, many of your exam paper questions, they ask you stuff like this, which actually is fairly simple to answer. But unfortunately, people don't get the full mark for it. Why? Because they haven't read the question carefully enough. Now, look at this wording here. Link the structure. So you have to link the actual structure of enantiomers to a physical property that can be used to distinguish them from non-optically active molecules. Okay. Enantiomers or optically active molecules contain carbon atoms connected to four different groups. That's the structure. And we want to relate it to a physical property that can be used to distinguish them from things that are non-optically active. Optically active molecules rotate the plane of polarization of plane polarized light, PPL, plane polarized light. You didn't need to go into all of this, right, but say you can clarify it completely by saying non-optically active molecules do not do this. The two enantiomeric forms, like these two here, one and its mirror reflection, the two enantiomeric forms rotate the plane of polarization of PPL in opposite directions. One will rotate it clockwise, the other one will rotate it anticlockwise. Now, is it possible by looking at an enantioma to be able to easily say which way it's going to rotate plane of polarized light? No. Something else about this? Uh, obviously, if you have equal amounts of the two enantiomers in a solution, do you think that would rotate plane polarized light? No. If you have one only, it will rotate it maximum to the left or maximum to the right. If you have a partial mixture of unequal amounts, it will rotate it somewhat, but not the full amount of the left or the full amount of the right. 